Hello there and welcome to Hustle and Heart TV. I'm Darieth Chisholm. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. I really enjoy interviewing successful entrepreneurs. And on this show, we focus on four pillars, leadership, leverage, lifestyle, and loving your journey. And I look for guests who are excelling in all four of those areas. I especially enjoy showcasing young people who are rocking it out. And so on this edition of Hustle and Heart TV, you'll have the opportunity to meet an enterprising public administration leader. Her name is Sabrina Saunders, and she is the Pittsburgh Executive Director for Strong Women, Strong Girls, where she's responsible for strategic development, as well as management and enhancement of their Pittsburgh operations. Sabrina is a true emerging community leader who almost took a different path in life. Her story is both heartwarming and encouraging, so sit back and enjoy this next episode of Hustle and Hard TV. You're watching Hustle and Hard TV, a video podcast show that spotlights expert advice from top money earners, successful entrepreneurs, superstar network marketers, and leading authorities in business and marketing. I'm Darius Chisholm. I'm inviting you into my home and I'm bridging my own personal success as an entrepreneur, MLMer, news anchor, and now video podcast show host to help you leverage more tools and resources, make more money, and generate more ways to take action, become a rock star, and love your journey. Sabrina Saunders, thank you so much for being on Hustle and Hard today. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Daria. You know what? This is so incredible. Strong women, strong girls. Uh, you all have been active in the Pittsburgh community, changing lives one girl at a time. Why is that mission so important these days? Well, it's important because we forget about our girls. And it's, it seems really simplistic, but we have to remember to encourage and empower our young women because essentially girls can lead and girls can make a difference and girls ultimately, as the mission of Strong Women, Strong Girls would tell it, are gonna change the world. We are forgetting about how important it is to encourage girls to reach for their dreams and to expose them to options. For the last decade, we've been focusing on boys, but we should be empowering both. And when we talk about this mission of helping young girls learn the value of leadership, um, most adults are challenged by that. And, and you know, what key things do you do when you're working with young girls to help them identify their own leadership skills and share with them the importance of that? Well, so Strong Women, Strong Girls is actually three generations of mentoring. We have professional women who mentor college women, and then we train those college women to mentor young girls in grades three through five. So we have a very unique curriculum in which we highlight strong women who are role models, who have conquered it all, and we expose the young girls to these women, showing them they can also do these things. They can also aspire to be great. So our college women are teaching and facilitating these lessons, and the professional women are working with college women to help them transition as well. So it's, it's leadership across generations, and hopefully we're creating a sisterhood, a community of women. I love the message that you send, not only to the young girls, but as you talk about the collegiate girls and then professional women, that we're really all connected. This, this sense of understanding that as young women, when we grow up and then have lives of our own, to give back to young girls in a way that encourages them to follow in your footsteps is powerful. And it's, it's in my opinion, so powerful because it's, it's literally like holding each generation's hand and leading them. When this, uh, when this program was founded, um, Boston, many years ago, um, is, it, is it still living up to those same values that its, its founder uh, put into place? Well, we're, we're changing. We actually are growing up. So just as the girls in, in third and in fourth and fifth grade, nine, 10, 11, 12, year, 12 years old are making transitions and growing up, we've grown up as an organization as well. And so focusing on tenets that are going to allow young women to continue on cycles of leadership are what we're focusing on now and bringing community in as well. And of course, letting men know that they're a part of the conversation. So yes, it's about all of us working together. I know that um, I've had a significant number of mentors in my life and individuals who have encouraged me to pursue my dreams and to show me that anything was possible. 
that's not the reality of many of my peers. It's not the reality of a lot of people that um, I grew up with. And so we, we know that we have to change and stay relevant so that we can appeal to our girls and their families and the communities that we serve. So we're ever changing and um, we just changed our, our, our brand a bit and changed our look so that we can appeal to all and invite everyone into the conversation because this really is about all of us. So encouraging our girls so that we can ultimately influence communities in general. So let's get specific. Let's try and identify this from the three faces, if you will, that are a part of this. A young woman, a college student, and a professional. The young woman, Shaniqua, uh, is exposed to strong women, strong girls. How does this work for her? How does this process begin? Um, and then let's, I don't know, Amy would be our college student. And then Kimberly is, is the professional adult. Give me uh, a day in the life of each of them as they're a part of the organization. Sure. So we work in an after-school model in sites and in community centers throughout uh, Allegheny County. And so our girl would, after school, meet with her mentor who is a college student who may be from out of the city. So coming into a neighborhood that she's unfamiliar with, a community that she doesn't know much about, and building a relationship, creating a bond with a young girl who's just looking for someone to, who's not a parent that she can talk to and that she can confide in while she's learning about um, the importance of, of schoolwork, but battling being bullied and having low self-esteem. Talking this through with someone that's a little bit younger, that's fun, it's more like a sister, and working through some of these things together, being able to lead herself. And the college woman is building a relationship with a young girl that thinks that she is the best thing since sliced bread, that loves her unconditionally and can't wait to see her every week. Building her confidence and her ability as a leader, teaching her about the importance of giving back to communities that maybe she's not even from, but the new greater community that she's a part of as a college student. And then we have our professional busy women who are trying to, to climb the corporate ladder or trying to run a nonprofit or their own business. Um, and we are looking at a woman who essentially may not have had a mentor or may not have had positive experiences with women even who wants to make sure that another young woman who's in college does have that connection. And so these three women, they may not even have direct touch points together but are individually influencing each other up the line and down the pipeline as well. What brings women and girls to this program? I mean, I could see where if for young girls she um, is being encouraged through school or some after school program or, or another adult, but when, you, when you're working with women who are very busy owning their own business, um, you know, working uh, in, in their own families, what do you find is the thing that encourages them to give back and be a part of this? I think it's the community of sisterhood that we've built. We have chapters on each campus that are identified as organizations through the universities and they have a culture of sisterhood there. The strong leaders, as we call professional women, build a culture of sisterhood as well. And it's something that is not often celebrated in every aspect of our life. And so they continue to come and continue to participate and give because it's something that we all really are looking for. It's that sisterhood, that belonging, the relatability, and also the opportunity to positively impact change. Let's look at what it takes to run a program of this magnitude. And, and for you, in, in your life, and as you, you, you know, get up every day and, and you know, make sure that this vision is, is seen and heard by many, I would imagine it takes a lot of time, energy, and a big team. It, it sure does, and I, I've got to tell you, I think it's really important for me to mention that I am a new executive director, and that in itself is a huge undertaking. There's so much to learn, and I, I come with, with my own expertise and my, my own personal experiences within this work and my own hopes for the work. However, the business side of it is something that's important to be able to conquer, um, and I want to make sure that this, this organization, which is a business, goes to the next level. And so um, I have a small team, 
and we we are a team. We work together to make sure that every aspect of the organization is is seen through, and that's what it takes. It takes dedication and commitment, and for me, the newness of it is, is keeping it fun, exciting. When you were a young girl, did you imagine that this is what you would be doing? What were your dreams? When I was a young girl, I had big dreams. Um, I thought that I could do anything. I actually wanted to be a Supreme Court Justice when I was younger. And um, now thinking about that, I knew what a Supreme Court Justice was at a very young age. <laughs> um, I was always a very serious young girl. Um, and so I honestly wanted to make decisions that would help people. And that's just like our young girls. They want to help people. We see that every day. We ask them what they want to do. But the careers or the, the paths that they would take are sometimes very unclear on how they would see that into reality. And I was similar. I was similar. High hopes, but not a clear path on how to get there. Yeah, but you're still making decisions that are impacting lives, and even more so because of the, the intimate involvement that you have with several generations of women. And um, I would think that that is equally um, rewarding. If you, you know, if you've been a Supreme Court justice, you would have been impacting lives, but this way a little more uh, intimate in that. We've got a lot that we want to talk about. I want to dive a little bit into your, your background and the fact that in many ways you do have some influence in the city and your, your involvement with several other social organizations uh, and city government. Um, plus, how you manage your lifestyle in all of this. As a new executive director, things can get uh, very busy and uh, even ways that you leverage your time uh, and the team that you have in place. We'll do that when we come back. We need to take a quick break. Do you dread going to work every day, stuck in a dead-end job? Hi, I'm Daryl Warden of the Miles Group. I love my career, and you can too. We're looking for people who like to go to work, have a great time, take control of their schedules, and take charge of their lives. I worked in food service, and I never knew that I could be happy, help people, and make great money. We will train you, help you get your license. If you want to work amongst friends and make great money, call Team Warden at the Miles Group. Are you looking for a way to advertise your business, product, or service? Why not do it here on Hustle & Heart TV? We'd be happy to send you our media kit for show sponsorship and advertising. Reach out to us at info at dariathchisholm.com or give us a call at 412-692-1600 and we'll send you a media kit with all the information. The Pink House, a 100-year-old attraction filled with the sweet, yummy smell of award-winning Wagner's chocolate. This unique boutique is unlike any candy shop you've ever experienced. The indulgent aroma delights you as you wander from room to room, and you'll discover Wagner's is more than just chocolate. Shop for your own candy-making supplies, visit the gift shop, book your next party, and be a kid again in the fun ice cream parlor where they serve hot and cold drinks and Hershey's ice cream. The signature chocolates are handmade with care and attention to detail. You'll be amazed at the favorite offerings that keep generations returning to this family-owned gym. Chocolate-covered pretzels and Twinkies, caramel apples, homemade biscotti, and so much more. This family-friendly experience is worth the stop in Finleyville to experience a 37-year-old tradition. Or order online at thepinkhouse.biz and give a call to 724-348-2238. Sabrina, you are one hot, and when I say hot, I'm, I'm using that word to just describe your energy, your personality, um, executive director. I mean, you know, there are lots of executive directors, uh, women who have spent many, many years in leadership and in servitude uh, to get to that point. But as a young woman, you're filling some pretty big shoes, but you're doing it with a different charisma and style. And I've been watching you, and it's nice to see that happen. How do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for that. And um, it's, it's something that I love to do. I have always wanted to do something that kind of stirs me up, that gets me going. And uh, I feel like my career journey has continued to live up to that. And I, I love living in Pittsburgh. I love all the opportunity that's here for young people. I feel like I got a glimpse of what it would be like to lead and never let it go. And it's that excitement that keeps me going. I see so much opportunity 
and I now have amazing people who were constantly pushing me forward and, and helping me navigate the waters. And that's so important. I uh, certainly didn't get to any point in my career or my life by myself. And I really, I, I, I appreciate the team of people who have just been amazingly supportive of me and all of my crazy dreams or all of the things that I really, um, I saw from beginning to end. And I feel like my career, my journey, has been something that I saw from beginning to end. I've made some decisions that um, were things that I decided a long time ago, uh, let's just say. And, um, and it's, it keeps me going to, to hit that next milestone or to reach that next goal and to continue to do something that stirs my soul. Let's talk about that because often on this show, uh, we spend energy and focus and commitment around being your best, working hard, dreaming big, hustling. Right. That's the title <laughs> of the show. But it, when, when you look at what it takes for you every day as an executive director, but a young woman who is now living those goals and actually watching them accomplish, goal setting and dreaming big is paramount to success. Certainly, certainly. And also following through and following up. And I would say that those are things that have been instrumental in my success, making sure that the connections that are made, because I said, you know, Pittsburgh is a great place full of lots of opportunity for young people. And I've been able to make connections and through networking and by going through events. And some of this is very tiresome. It's consistently working at it and consistently being out and, um, and selling yourself and what you can do, making sure that you're not the only person that knows what you're capable of. Yeah. What's the message you would give to another young woman who is uh, aspiring to be a community leader, an executive director of a, a nonprofit, of an organization of the size and the caliber and the scale that you have? What are some strategies or tools or tips that you would offer to them if that is in fact what's on their dream board and on their list of goals? Well, be prepared to work hard. and recognize that it is, it's worth it in the end and there's no sacrifice. It's all opportunity. And even the things that seem hard and harsh are all opportunity for something better. And so I feel like those are the things that you need to continue to motivate yourself to move forward in this work because it's, it's about anything that involves helping other people, it, there's some strain and strife and it's going to sometimes get tough and it can be very lonely. Uh, individuals will say it's lonely at the top. Well, in the nonprofit world, there are lots of organizations and lots of leadership, but it can be very lonely. What part makes it lonely? Not, I mean, because you would think that there's enough around you that in fact you just need enough people to get moving in the right direction, but why? what seems lonely about that? Well, everybody just doesn't get it. Everyone doesn't get why you may do all the the work that you do, spend all the time and the hours, and, and you are doing it all for others. And so the selfless work, it seems great on the surface, but many people like your family and your friends may not immediately understand the benefit to you. And it's, it's usually about your heart. It's about what is important to you and what keeps you going. And everyone's not going to get that. They're just not. It's the same message in business, and it's the same message no matter what it is that you're working for. Most people won't get the work, the hustle, and they won't get the heart, the love part of what it takes to go after a dream, no matter what it is, whether it's in nonprofit or running your own small-based business, it's still the same caliber of work and heart that goes, that goes in it. Uh, and when you're working with your team of people and you get that sense of loneliness or that sense of isolation, how do you conquer it? What do you do? Well, I have, well, I do have an amazing family and I have a great group of friends. I spend a lot of time just plugging in to them. You know, the long conversations, the weekend trips together, just spending time with the individuals that can help get me re-energized. Um, I've learned that even if they don't understand my plight, they love me unconditionally and they want to make sure that I succeed. And so the best way for me to you know, get that sense of, of fulfillment that I need to continue moving forward. It's really just plugging in that way to family and friends. It's balance. Sure. Sure. And, and the balance is, it's available. I, I have to spend a lot of, of time in the evening going to events or having events or just working 
to, to write a grant or to try and compel someone to, to come on our, on our side and uh, to join in this work. However, there's a lot of time to also take care of, of me. And I do that through great friendships and through the sisterhood that I have um, and that I've established that is very important and something that I hold on to very dearly. Young woman growing up, as you said, you wanted to be a Supreme Court justice. Um, didn't quite move down that road, but you did spend some time in city government. I did, I did. When So uh, the dream of Supreme Court justice then turned into a dream of being a speechwriter. And when I was in when I was in college, I dreamt of writing speeches for the president. <laughs> and I really wanted that to be my reality. As I came into my own and became stronger, I recognized that the reason I wanted to write for others was because I wasn't sure that people wanted to hear my voice. I wasn't sure that they would listen to me. So I wanted to write for powerful people who I knew that individuals would want to listen to, but they'd just be hearing my voice under theirs. And by working in, I worked for an amazing uh, mentor and boss in Congress, and through that experience then transitioned into local government and recognized that my voice was valid. As long as I had the information, had the expertise, I was not coveted, but a necessary compartment um, in moving things forward. And so when you prepare yourself, you insert yourself in situations that you cannot be removed from. And so I did write speeches, and I've written a number for myself. And that was a goal of mine. But I now do it talking about the young women and girls that we try and serve and making sure that people essentially are coming on board to the, the work that I need them to do for us at Strong Women, Strong Girls. And so that same desire to write and have your words come to life through someone else, you now get to do every day and um, you know, share that message yourself as, as an executive director. Uh, with strong women, strong girls. I think that's incredible. I mean, and any young woman listening to this, anyone, uh, you know, aspiring in their own uh, aspirations to achieve something should know that if you see yourself in one place, and but you feel like you need someone else to, 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 to make that come alive, it's okay, because that probably is just the, the beginning uh, seed that you're planting. But you should just take the next step and dream bigger, because you could be doing it yourself. And that's what I think every step has shown me, that you can do that, and so I do it. And I feel like as long as you can take the first step, you start to see yourself in every reality that can paint, be painted. And that's been uh, the beauty of this, of this work and of my journey, is that I started to see myself in these things, and it became a reality because it was real to me. Um, and until it's real to you, it's never going to happen. So it has to be real to you first. And taking that first step is so important in getting it done. So what steps have you taken lately to take your business to a whole nother level? Or are you stuck or stalled? I'd love to hear from you. So send me an email at info at dariathchism.com or you can like me on Facebook at Dariath Chism or on Twitter at Dariath Chism and share your journey. Ask me a question, give me a topic or two or a potential show guest. Looking forward to hearing from you. The award-winning Savoy restaurant has become synonymous with fine dining, upscale ambiance, and a great destination for local and national celebrities to enjoy the night in style. The Savoy has won multiple Savor Pittsburgh awards for its delicious menu. Our wine list was awarded Wine Spectator's 2012 Award of Excellence. And the Savoy has also won the American Institute of Architects People's Choice Award for its beautiful architecture and design. For dinner reservations and more info, log on to SavoyPGH.com. Welcome to Smoke Cigar Shop and Lounge. Come smoke your ash off. Come for the knowledge and stay for the experience. With 15 years in the cigar business, we are here to help you find just the right cigar for you or a gift for someone else. We have cigars to fit any budget and palette, from super premium to hard to find boutique brands. A comfortable lounge to enjoy your cigars, free Wi-Fi, and BYOB with Cork B. Sit back and relax and get the full experience. There's always a lot going on at Smoke Cigar Shop. Sports, news, great conversation, or meetings with your coworkers. To stay on top of all of our events and specials, visit us at SmokeCigarShop.com or on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Smoke Cigar Shop. Download our app at the App Store or Google Play Store. We're open 10 to 9 during the week, 
and until 10 Friday and Saturday, Sunday 12 to 5. Remember, smoke cigar shop and lounge. Smoke your ash off with fine butts and hot ashes. Hello, I'm Chuck Sanders, and you're watching Hustle and Heart TV. Sabrina, part of what has happened for you in, in this journey is you also had the opportunity to serve in one of um, this country's uh, greatest uh, organizations, the Urban League, um, and to even be affiliated, I think, um, with that really provides people with a grassroots effort as well as a corporate effort. I think the Urban League is probably an extension of both of those things. And, and I would imagine you, you learned a lot with your time there. I learned everything I know about running a nonprofit through my work at the Urban League. I served on their board of directors. I was the young professional president for their auxiliary, and then I went on to work for the Urban League as director of education and youth development. And so I was able to see the organization through so many lenses and was extremely committed to the movement. And, and that's what we consider the work of the Urban League to be a movement. It's, it's something that is very near and dear to my heart. I still support the organization. And uh, Esther Bush is my mentor and has, has helped me along through my transition as exec executive director for Strong Women, Strong Girls as well. And so the laying the groundwork for my interest in leading an organization that can make an impact in community uh, was the work that I did at the Urban League. And um, whether that was through my volunteerism with the Urban League and the training and professional development that I received as a young professional uh, volunteer or the on-the-job, on the grassroots um, movement work that I did as an employee and, of course, as a volunteer board member, um, I got to see the, the business and the corporate side of the work and understand the legal ramifications and fiduciary responsibility, things that are so very important to running a nonprofit uh, today. And so I would say that that was somewhat the, the, the final building block uh, in preparing me for where I am now. And it was a very important component of that. Yeah, you have to do the work to prepare yourself for the next level of work that, that you do. For women who are watching who uh, or listening um, who have uh, in their minds and in their hearts the desire to serve and serve a nonprofit in some form of leadership, things they should be doing, things they should be staying away from? Well, they should be serving on boards. They should be serving themselves to understand the interworkings of an organization like a, a nonprofit or even, I mean, even a business for that matter. It's important to be an expert in the area and that's how you're going to be successful. You have to do the work. So in many times it's something that you're not going to get paid for. And so giving your time so that you actually uh, can put in the real time that you need to later on is going to be vitally important. But also having mentors that can help guide you in the right direction. There are a number of nonprofits in the city. And so you want to make sure that the work that's going to be done is going to contribute in a way that's going to be impactful and meaningful. And so understanding the terrain, what is out there, what's available to you as a resource, how do you get started, you have to do the work and the research first. Understand what is here and where you can contribute specifically is going to be vitally important to really making your mark in this work. And in terms of trying to, because we all have to make mistakes, that's the only way that we learn, and there's obviously pl plenty of challenges that can be had, but a piece of advice around people just maybe not going down a certain direction if, in fact, your goal is to become an executive director of a strong nonprofit. Well, I, so if I make just one huge mistake a week, I've done a good job, I feel, and, and that's okay as long as you're learning from them and you're just not making them those mistakes again is what's important. I think that you have to explore your interest and you have to find out if something is truly for you by doing. You're not going to learn by sitting and watching. You have to get out there and explore and do the things that you feel you may even be interested in. Get involved in some way, whether it's through volunteerism, even starting to research, asking someone to talk through it with you. It can be just that easy. Having a conversation about what you're interested in is a start in making it a reality for you. 
So I would even just start there by having a simple conversation to make it real. And there are enough organizations out there that, that would love anyone's support, whether they're volunteering or, or really working to, to be a part of a board uh, or the mission. And so when we turn things back to strong women, strong girls, and, and you look at your work there, um, what are you most proud of? Right now, I'm, I'm most proud of our reach in, in the community. We are so widespread. I feel like we have a ways to go, but we've grown over the years and we are impacting more girls, we're serving more mentors, and we're bringing more professional women and men into the conversation. I'm very proud of that. Where do you see yourself going in the next few years with the organization, both personally but certainly professionally? Well, to have more of a regional impact. I, I know that this, this work for girls is, is just beginning, essentially. We still have a significant amount of our 10-year-old girls whose biggest fear is being overweight and, um, and whose self-esteem is leading them to drinking and to smoking and other very negative behaviors. We've got to stop it. And um, I feel like we have a model that works. And so taking it regionally and growing is, is the next step for this work. How does that model work, though? When we, so going back to our, we talked earlier about putting three faces on this, as I said. And so if we're talking about the 10-year-old young girl who, um, who is struggling with you know, low self-esteem or maybe not going to school or their weight, what does your model do specifically that impacts that young girl? We actually change the face of what leadership looks like. And so we make her a leader. And we show her that she can reverse cycles of bullying for girls that are like her or for girls that have been influenced by girls like her. Because the, the infighting with girls, the conflict with girls usually stems from a young girl who is troubled. And so when we take the troubled girl and turn her into a leader by showing her what's deeply inside her, which is leadership and strength and confidence, then we change the conversation. And that's what we're doing with our model. That is fantastic. And to know that each of those girls um, can really look deep down inside and declare themselves a leader and declare themselves um, healed of that uh, pain or fear that they um, had formerly embraced, it makes a big difference. Sure, yes. And um, to go back to now our college students who you know, find ways to give back to these young girls, but also maybe are struggling themselves with some level. How do you impact them? Well, they model. So they don't just mentor, they model the work. And so they have to live these things directly, which helps to reinforce what we already know about them, is that they're strong and that they are the next change makers. And so we are teaching them to move these things forward and so they live them directly and continue to give back as they will influence other compartments of community or of work in their lives and families. Right, and then our, our woman who is there to, to serve and lead each of them, I'm sure, finds great impact in being involved in all of this. Oh, certainly. I mean, they are utilizing skills even that they're used to employing at work with the young, young women that they're mentoring and then can take these skills back to, to work and to family and community. And so it, it definitely is um, serving multiple purposes for um, building not just confidence uh, amongst the generations, but building a sense of purpose. For I want to ask you uh, two things. One is, because um, I know we've had a great discussion and we've pulled a lot out of you, but a hustle tip, something that you would share with people in terms of working hard, and a heart tip around loving what you do in your journey. My hustle tip would be that You have to make it real and act immediately. As soon as you see it, move forward and act on it. And my heart tip would be to make sure that whatever you do stirs your soul. Sabrina Saunders, thank you so much for being a part of Hustle and Heart TV. It was such a pleasure to get to know you. I appreciate it. If you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher Radio or watching on iTunes or YouTube, I'd love to hear from you. Write a review. You can simply give us a five star. That would be fantastic. I would appreciate it. Write a review and share your thoughts about this episode or any of the other episodes that we have put out. And I appreciate you taking the time to do it. Trouble can find anyone. At Frank Walker Law, we take the time to understand your situation and work tirelessly on your behalf. 
hard-hitting representation when you need it the most. A real law firm getting real results. Hi, I'm Jan, Rapreneur extraordinaire. What does that mean? It means days filled with friendships, a job that's all about fun, and a life of freedom. But it wasn't always this way. Not long ago, I was a stressed out working mom with a boring job just trying to make ends meet. When I saw this amazing picture on Facebook, it said if I had just $25 and 45 minutes, this crazy wrap thing could tighten, tone, and firm my skin. I thought, no way, those results are unbelievable. So I had to try it. I went to a wrap party, and in just 45 minutes, I was experiencing those unbelievable results for myself. I found out I could join the party with my own website, have my own parties, and make some fast cash by having fun with my friends. I shared it with my Facebook friends and they all wanted to try it. I just followed the company's simple three steps to success, and before I knew it, I was earning free wraps and cash, and having a blast doing it. Best of all, the checks kept getting bigger and bigger every month. I was able to pay off my credit cards and student loans with this crazy wrap thing. Now I've quit my job. I'm able to spend more time with my kids and my family is living debt free. I've got the life I've always dreamed of and you can have it too. To start redreaming your life, join the party today. It's simple, try it, you'll like it, it works. Get more information about It Works Global. Go to simplesuccessfromhome.com or call 412-692-1600. Hello, this is Roberto Clemente Jr. with the RC21X Company Thermometer for Your Brain. And I'll see you in the next episode of Hustle and Heart.